Hi everyone, this is Nargis Ashtari. I'm a PhD student at Sama Fraser University. And today I'm going to talk about creating augmented reality and virtual reality applications, current challenges, practices, and opportunities. So to start, we all know that the augmented and virtual reality are going to be an integral part of the near future technology. And many consumer level AR and VR devices are emerging in the market. While AR and VR devices are getting cheaper and also easier to access, most of the people involved in authoring AR and VR devices so far have been among professional developers who are engaged mostly in industry level projects. However, right now we can see that the door is getting open for many non-professionals and they are increasingly tinkering with AR and VR applications. As an example, we can see artists who are using augmented reality to make art installations. We can also see teachers using AR and VR to enable themselves to uh, convey complex ideas in their classes. We can also see architects who are using AR and VR to get a better sense of their design via virtual physicalization. So we can see right now that there is a rich body of research available in HCI community about AR and VR creation, and they are exploring different ways to ease the creation process. However, the problem that we have right now is that we know relatively little about non-professional AR and VR creators' approach towards learning process and where they face barriers uh, during their design and development activities. So in this study, our focus was on understanding what processes do non-professional AR and VR creators currently use and how are they different from other kinds of interaction design and development like mobile and web development. In this study, we also wanted to understand what challenges do non-professional creators face when working on AR and VR projects. So to answer these questions, we decided to apply a qualitative approach by conducting semi-structured interviews with 21 non-professional AR and VR creators. After our data analysis and uh, after um, getting the results of our study, three groups of creators emerged. The first group consisted eight user experience and user interface designers. The second group included six domain experts who were mostly researchers and subject matter experts. And the last group was made of seven hobbyists who uh, were not working on uh, commercial scale projects and they described their projects as uh, personal projects or mostly gaming related ones. So in the paper, we synthesized eight key barriers described by our uh, non-professional AR and VR creators, uh, which were ranging from understanding the initial landscape of authoring tools to designing and prototyping AR and VR experiences and to implementation, debugging, and user testing. In this presentation in particular, I'm going to talk about uh, three of the most interesting uh, key takeaways uh, one by one. So to start, we um, found that there was a lack of understanding around where to start and what to even look for uh, when beginning the AR and VR creation process. So to give you a quick look of what takes one to make an AR or a VR application, you need to first choose a head-mounted display from a wide variety of HMDs available right now in the market. And then, you need to prototype and often make a 3D model. So you need to select and learn a 3D modeling software. Also, the frameworks in which you code require you to uh, mastery uh, in different programming languages. And all this finally 
should be compatible with the computer you're using. And also, away from all these very initial issues, uh, one of the key deficiencies reported was that compared to other mediums like mobile development, AR and VR development lacked concrete design guidelines and examples. So uh, this problem in our study was found to be more accurate for uh, hobbyists and domain experts as they mostly didn't have any intuition in uh, and experience in UX and uh, UI design. As an example, one of our hobbyists commented on his struggles using UI assets provided in Unity, telling that uh, we didn't have any guidelines. I mean, they say in documentation, you have some assets in this Unity package, like standard buttons or standard windows, use them, but they didn't say how to use them. So in here, we kind of saw how lack of intuition in UX and UI design might have affected our hobbyists and domain experts. But the interesting point that we found was that, again, the intuition wasn't really helpful for the UX designers as well when they were handling situations like object selection, conditional actions, scene flows, and movement between scenes. Secondly, in our study, we observed that every stage in design had its own user-centered design challenges for our creators. So an interesting observation from our study was that most of our domain experts and hobbies didn't even know of the existence of um, prototyping and user testing steps. So instead of the typical approach towards application creation, going to the research, prototyping, implementation, and testing, they skip the uh, prototyping step and jumped right into the implementation, ignoring the testing step as well. On the other hand, if you remember, we have UX designers. And while UX designers were more invested in proper prototyping and user testing processes, they also experienced some barriers. So according to our UX designers, compared to designing for 2D applications, AR and VR were difficult because of the addition of many factors such as designing of user postures for many different scenarios and at the same time, controlling their fatigue and simulator sickness. Moreover, in 3D experiences, there is a need for experience in sound design to give a clue to the users to enable them to easily navigate the virtual spaces. So as a response and to get a better sense of a 3D prototype, our UX designers came up with uh, the methods such as role-playing and 360 storyboarding. However, these methods were reported to be open-ended and non-representative of the real virtual experiences as they still could not be considered to be accurate in visual aspects and also lighting and audio design. So moving forward, Another issue came up when UX designers attempted to test their applications with UX methods they had already learned previously. So most of the participants in this group reported struggling with their testing in AR and VR environment. And one of the key challenges in uh, user testing was that the end users who they worked with often did not have uh, any intuition about using AR and VR equipment or any kind of experience being in immersive environments. As an example, one of the UX designers shared with us that testing is one of the biggest challenges, especially if it's a new user. They have problems to grasp that connections in their minds that what they touch, he means controllers, is the equivalent of what they're seeing virtually. 
Lastly, even when creators could get over some of the barriers in getting started, they faced another key challenge in dealing with constant changes in AR and VR technologies and lack of relevant support. People making AR and VR experiences right now are working in an environment where not everyone has figured out what is possible for any particular devices. Constant changes in hardware many times leaves creators behind and makes their creations useless and unsupported. One of our participants shared uncertainties going on, telling that you create an AR experience for the Samsung and it doesn't work on any other Android phone. And the client wants it on multiple phones. So suddenly the team faces persistent changes. So here, based on what we learned through this study, our hope for the future authoring tools is to provide opportunities for creators to start easy while being able to do more complex interactions within the same tool. We also need to consider facilitating testing and debugging processes. More importantly, in this study, we learned that we need a much better understanding of the user diversity among AR and VR creators. There are many possibilities, but we suggest be looking at the subfield of end user development as a starting point. End user developers are non-professional developers who come from a wide variety of backgrounds, often other than computer science. These people do not always have a clear plan uh, for their development needs and have different needs compared to industry professionals. And we saw that most of the AR and VR creators in our study fit this description. Therefore, we have to consider uh, what can HCI learn from successful practices applied for supporting end-user development in other domains such as web and mobile development? And how can we apply them to AR and VR creation practices? So we hit to the end of this presentation. Thanks for listening. And please read our paper and feel free to reach out if you need to discuss more or if you need to ask some questions.